Hello again, church. Before we return to the scriptures, I'd like to say a few words about fasting again. We've talked about this discipline several times over the past 40 days, usually focusing on uh, the hunger that we experience for food or whatever you gave up as a fast. I'm fasting today as I record this, and I'm hungry right now. <laughs> I continue to hear from those of you who have given up some variety of social media. You speak to me about clearer hearts and minds, about better mental health, and space for spiritual work that you've been needing to do for a long time. You are encountering the living water about which Jesus will speak in today's passage. I would encourage you to begin to think about healthy boundaries about around social media as you resume those practices in a healthy way. Maybe you can write out a plan and share it with a friend to experience mutual accountability. You may decide you don't need that stuff in your life any longer. I think that's a great decision. Whatever you do, just consider what God may be teaching you about priority, focus, and the need to keep our minds and hearts free from junk. Let's go to John 7, verse 37. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, we're near the temple, he cried out, let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, which believers in him were to receive, for as yet there was no Spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. That last little bit's just an editorial comment for John. He wants to make sure we understand the Spirit's coming. We'll get to that part later. Part of the great celebration of the Festival of Booths, which is what was happening in Jerusalem, included the priest leaving the temple through what was called the Water Gate, walking down to the Pool of Siloam with a magnificent golden pitcher, filling it with water, and then returning to, the, to pour that water on the altar. It was a several hundred yard parade with musicians and priests culminating in a dramatic pouring of the water over the altar in the temple. The priest would pray, Please, Lord, save us. Hear our prayers. He would recite many psalms and other prayers. The emphasis of the whole festival is on the wandering Israelites and the symbolism of God dwelling with them and they with him. The salvation is God dwelling with them. The water represented a cleansing of the sin of the people. This is likely what's happening when Jesus shouts, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and out of the believers' hearts shall flow rivers of living water. With all that context in mind, you can't help but notice the difference between what's happening in the temple, a commemoration, a remembrance, an enactment of also some hoped-for future. That You can't not help but notice the difference between that and what Jesus is offering, the real thing, the very presence of God, salvation, cleansing from sin, and living water flowing from a place deep within not from the pool of Siloam. As a believer in Jesus, I hope you can feel the rivers of living water flowing from your heart in which the heart of God now dwells. You are a living temple revealing the loving presence of God to a hurting world. Think about that when you're at work today or Walmart or at the gas station. Life isn't as mundane as we often think. Let's pray together. Oh God, let the living water flow. Let it flow in me. In the name of Jesus. Amen.